Let's get ready to rumble! The other day I was thinking that the first case of a boxer taking PEDs that at least I knew of was James Kinchin against Thomas Hearns in the late 80s for the WBO super middleweight title. Hearns won the fight on points. But Kinchin, who was a fringe contender, never a great fighter, but nevertheless a tough fighter, gave Hearns a dire struggle. He floored Tommy early and he kept getting hit with flush jabs and flush right hands and he was just walking through them like, wow, like Return of the Zombie. And it was later found that um, he had traces of some kind of PED. I'm not sure what it is. And the information on that on the internet is quite vague. And yes, he was a black fighter before you go into one. And that's the first case of a boxer taking PEDs that I can recall. If anybody can go further back, just let me know. And I just got some breaking news that um, a British fighter has just been found taking PEDs. Quite a rare case. Don't really find too much British fighters getting caught up in that mix. And before you ask, yes, he is black. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting all this black shit and white shit out of the way before somebody comments on the page, oh, it's all black fighters. Then I could counter and argue and say that it was white people who developed the technology for PEDs. But it's childish, you know? We should be really concentrating on solutions to clean up this current scourge in boxing. So it's Larry Olabamiwo has apparently been hit with a four-year ban for a string of doping offences. Larry is a British heavyweight from Hackney, 33 years of age. Hackney's in London, by the way. Larry has fessed up to using 13 banned substances. 13, Larry. Blood clot. We are trying to turn into the Hulk including human growth hormone and anabolic steroids over a six-year period. Got to interject, Larry is actually built like a the proverbial brick shithouse, nicknamed the War Machine. Larry tested positive for the blood-boosting drug EPO in January after a technical decision loss to Sam Sexton. Well, how comes I didn't know about that? Maybe it just came out now. Larry has a reputation as a big puncher with a string of knockout wins, but defeats against John McDermott and Sam Sexton appear to end his hopes of achieving at a higher level. Larry, who is a late bloomer, turned to boxing after a spell in prison. Well, that's no surprise that he's done some bad, considering he comes from acne. I shouldn't say that, I shouldn't say that, I shouldn't say that. To all my peoples in Hackney, big up, big up, big up, because I don't want to get caught up in these utes and their postcode beef. The British Boxing Border Control General Secretary, Robert Smith, says, while this is a sad case, it demonstrates that the cheats cannot hide anywhere and that doping will not be tolerated. Whew. Well, all I can say is Larry is an example of where PEDs cannot give you boxing technique because Larry was very rudimentary in all aspects of boxing technique, skill, ring savvy, footwork, hand to eye coordination, etc. etc. And apparently, the British Boxing Border Control are not rampant, they've annulled all of Larry's fights. All of them. Larry more than likely will not be the last case we hear this year of fighters getting caught up in doping offences as the scourge of PEDs continues to ravage and infiltrate the sport of boxing. Peace out.